We have a ton of artifacts from ancient Egypt, but few are so interesting and important as the Rin Papyrus. A papyrus is a sheet of material that was used throughout ancient Egypt and other parts of the world, which consisted mainly of stems of the papyrus plant, which were cut and then made into layered sheets. These sheets of papyrus were the ancestor to modern paper. In fact, the word paper is actually derived from the word papyrus. The significance of these papyri, the plural of papyrus, is that they allowed for the mass availability of cloths, rope, and amongst other utilities, a surface for writing and preserving thoughts and ideas. The Rind papyrus was dated around 1550 BCE. It was found during an illegal excavation and bought by Alexander Henry Rind in 1858 in Luxor, Egypt. The Rind Papyrus is a mathematical scroll documenting 84 problems and their solutions, including very interesting mathematical facts such as the ancient Egyptians' knowledge of Pythagorean triples despite existing long before the works of Pythagoras. One of the problems from the Rind Papyrus that serves as the topic of this video is translated as follows. If you are told a truncated pyramid of six for the vertical height, by four on the base, by two on the top. You are to square this four, result 16. You are to double four, result eight. You are to square two, result four. You are to add the 16, the eight, and the four, result 28. You are to take a third of six, result two, you are to take 28 twice, result 56. See, it is 56. You will find it right. Now, labeling the dimensions algebraically will allow us to find a general equation for the volume of a truncated pyramid. You are to square the major base length, add on to that the product of the major and minor base lengths, add on to that the square of the minor base length, then you are to multiply that sum by the height over 3. And thus, we now have a neat algebraic expression for the volume of a truncated pyramid, where the dagger symbol is being used to denote truncation. But now the question arises, how is it that the ancient Egyptians came upon this equation? Without the mathematical insights of Pythagoras and his theorems about triangles and geometry, and without even Descartes' consolidation of geometry and numbers that has now become the standard with the Cartesian coordinates. In this video, we are going to endeavor to limit our toolset and abandon tools like trigonometry and calculus in favor of mathematical knowledge and basic facts that the ancient Egyptians would have known. On the screen now is a list of tools and abstract mathematical concepts that will be employed over the course of this video. In order to find an expression for the volume of a truncated pyramid, it would be useful to have an expression for the volume of a regular pyramid. Let's now make the assertion that we are only concerned with square-based pyramids with side lengths represented by the variable b and heights represented by h. In the case of truncated pyramids, there are two side lengths that we are concerned with. The side lengths on the bottom will be referred to as the major base length represented by the variable b and the side lengths on the top as the minor base length represented by the variable a. Trying to find an expression for the volume analytically is incredibly challenging, so we must instead rely on geometric reasoning. Because geometric thinking in three dimensions can prove quite challenging, it might be useful to take some inspiration from the 2D case of the triangle. The trick to finding the area of a right angle triangle is realizing that if you have two of the same triangle, they can be arranged as such. And now the area of the resulting rectangle is just the product of the sides. And now, because
because it took two triangles to form the rectangle, the area of the triangle can be deduced to be half of the product of the sides. We can find the volume of a regular pyramid from the same reasoning. As can be seen, it took six pyramids to form a cube with the same base, but double the height of the original pyramid. The volume of the resultant cube is just the product of the length, the width, and the height. And now, just as with the triangle in the 2D case, the volume of the pyramid is one-sixth the volume of the resultant cube. With a little bit of arithmetic, we now have our expression for the volume of a square-based pyramid. And now, one thing that should be noted is that the expression for the area of a triangle is always half the product of the length and height, and the volume of a pyramid is always a sixth of the area of the base times the height. The general solutions were not included for the sake of time. Now that we have an expression for the volume of a regular pyramid, we can now find the volume of a truncated pyramid. If you look carefully at the truncated portion of the pyramid, the missing volume is a regular pyramid. Let's now draw a 2D projection of the truncated pyramid and let's include the missing portion. Now labeling the major and minor base lengths, along with the height of the truncated pyramid, as well as the missing height that was truncated off. The volume of the truncated pyramid can easily be shown to be the volume of the full pyramid minus the pyramid section that was truncated off. Substituting in the expression for the volume of the full pyramid, as well as the expression for the missing pyramid. Factoring out the third and expanding, we can now refactor. Now we want an expression including the physical attributes of the truncated pyramid, such as the major base length, the minor base length, and the height. However, our expression also includes the height of the missing pyramid, so it would be nice if we could get the missing height in terms of the physical dimensions of the truncated pyramid. We can start by splitting this shape up into simple geometric shapes. Now notice that this line segment is equal to a over 2 and this line segment is equal to b over 2. Thus, this line segment is b minus a over 2. Now notice that this triangle and this triangle both have the same gradient. The equation for gradient is rise over run. Now substituting the values for both triangles and equating them together Rearranging the resultant equation gives us the expression we were looking for. Now notice that this expression is equivalent to the expression on the right. Now substitute our derived equation, simplify, and now substitute the result back into the equation. And now you can factor out the h, giving us our final expression. Finally, after all of that work, we now have the expression for the volume of a truncated pyramid. See it, you will find it right.